glow stove. I'd like to show you these four holes that I have in the door and why they're there. <clears throat> but before that, let me open the door and show you. Notice how the door is glowing. I put in one log that's about 8x8 eight by, eight by 20 inches long and there was an older log in there from a few hours ago. And the holes you can see on the door go all the way through. They're about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. When you throw a log in at first, notice how much flame there is and it's going up and it's, it creates smoke at first. But the hotter it is and the more flame, it burns the smoke. If you can do what's called secondary combustion or gasification, which is to introduce fresh air into an already existing fire, if you can see in those holes, there is actually flame coming out of the holes, which is the gas or the smoke particulate that's burning the smoke and makes for a much cleaner end result up out of the chimney. And in order to do that, you can Google what it takes for the beginning temperature for gasification or secondary burn <clears throat> on, my, on the uh, door around there, even at the hole. It's about 500 degrees on the outside by the time it goes through the three inch specialized ceramic refractory when it gets in there into the inside I can show you like that log is running about 1200 degrees the sidewall temperatures are a little hotter about 1400 but the actual glowing part of the coals is depending on range, ranges are about 1700 1800 and so why this happens is twofold. I've explained some of the details on my first video, but <clears throat> on the back side here, I've got a fresh air three inch inlet with a damper. And on that is a small fan by Dayton. And it has tubes or rectangular holes. And I can control my fan speed down there by that. Up here is my fan speed on top for the nine tubes that blow through as the heat exchangers. But as the fresh air comes from outside in here, it will split and go through a channel that goes along each right and left side as because it's three inches, the air heats before it turns into the the trinity of the, the combustion, which you need something that is combustible with oxygen and then heat so the average wood stove let's say that most people have as an insert or as a standalone that steel could never take this hot of a temperature because the steel welds would crack and then the steel itself would warp but there is no steel that contacts as far as the inside of this firebox anywhere it is all this specialized uh, refractory ceramic material I've got about 900 pounds of that, and I mix that on a special schedule that you have to heat it up to varying temperatures in order to get a full cure on that, which then insulates, glows, and then creates chamber. And I'll show you the chamber I made. I'll set it down on the floor. So that's a piece of steel. When I was making it, it's two and a quarter inch by half inch. And you can see it's got six holes and those have female threads. Those are 3 8 diameter. When I poured the right side and the left side, I had this inside. I'll show you where it lined up. Just about, about right like that. And when I pulled it out, it left that air chamber. So then when the fan here blows inside there, the air travels along there as sort of an engine manifold and blows the air evenly downward on an angle so it creates a different type of burn as you can see the log that's in there from a few hours ago it sort of glows in the sense where the log on the right doesn't have as much flame as the log on the left because 
the log burns in such a way that it gets the moisture of what's ever left and creates uh, a better combustible mass. Now, I usually use hardwoods because they last longer and they burn hotter. Um, but um, as I mentioned in my other videos, uh, I, I did make this partially because I couldn't find a wood stove that would heat my whole house along with a big enough door to put large logs in that would last a long time. This door is 14 inch square, so I can put pretty large logs in there up to 22 inches long and easily last 12 hours. In my next video I put up, I'll show you uh, what that entails. But up top here, uh, I talked a little bit about these nine tubes. These are um, just hollow and they're heated. There's no smoke in them. It's just this fan back here that I can control. I have a, a box, a metal box with holes. And this blows into the back. Blows out these holes and then also blows through these nine holes. So let me show you on the temperature gauge here. So the, the air coming out of there is around six to 700 degrees depending on and those tubes go all the way to the back and are fed by this this little fan also. I have them both on variable speed dials that I created so that I can adjust how much air comes in like a turbocharger on an engine. I can turn this way up, turn that up so this increases in velocity RPMs if I want to make even even hotter. My refractory temperature range can go up to 3,000 degrees. Can you maybe hear more of that air flowing through the sidewalls? Or if I'm going to be gone a long time or I'm going to be sleeping, what I'll do is I will turn that off. I will come down here and I have my damper, which is inside my 3-inch duct, turn that perpendicular and it seals off most of that so now I'm coasting and the term is choke the fire the, the the oxygen and so it lasts a lot longer but of course then the combustion process is slowed and so is the temperature but I can still easily heat my house for many hours afterwards but that's just a little bit of why those circles are there in the process about how I can create a stove like no other that I've seen. Now, regarding some outdoor wood stoves that you can pay up to $20,000, they call them wood boilers, they pump water that's not boiling, but it's 170, 185 under the ground with pipes into your house, into the furnace. And I've got my furnace up here, which is just, just a backup. There's a duct where I can turn on the fan and draw in the air but some uh, outdoor wood stoves pump the water into the main furnace and that has to run and it never really seems to get too hot. But it's uh, one of the popular ways it's growing for outdoor wood stoves. But they create a lot of smoke. They're inefficient because the fire can't get hot in a lot of them. Some of them now are even more expensive where you can get them where they really do burn hot. But they are so expensive. And uh, they do take a lot of wood, but they probably still burn more wood than I have. I mean, about seven years, I haven't burned any more than 17 face cord. So that's pretty much um, in a nutshell, five-minute nutshell, what's going on, nine-minute, I guess. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. If you got any other questions, send them along, and you have a great day.